last time on Drown Boy Productions. The only thing more dead than this channel is Brandon James himself. And you know what, guys? If we can get to 9,000 subscribers, 9,000, that's all I'm asking for. And that's just a few hundred subscribers. I've been gaining a few hundred this month already. We've been slowly climbing up there. I was hoping to have hit 10K already, but 9K is the next best thing. So maybe if we can get to 9K, I'll reconsider releasing that very, very special Halloween video. Well, guys, I think that about wraps it up for today's video. So I hope you all enjoyed it. And Colton, how many times do I have to tell you not to call me while I'm filming? Hello, Douglas. Who told you you could wear my mask? <laughs> Your mask? You mean the mask that I bought to dress as the killer for Halloween? Uh, so you want to dress like a killer? You're going to have to prove you've got the guts to do what it takes to be a killer. Halloween night, I want to see something special that cuts deep. Something that'll really get the blood flowing. So unless you want to end up in pieces, you'll release that video and show everyone what you've been keeping secret. No more tricks. Only treats. Well guys, it would appear that I have a special to start filming. <sighs> what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Tomorrow night is Halloween, and I still don't have a video ready. My life is on the line. The killer said it has to be something special. But what does that even mean? Something special. All my videos are special, I feel like. I put time and effort into each and every one of them. What am I going to do? I've put so much content out this month already, but none of it's going to cut it. What am I going to do? Think, think, think. Oh yeah, that'll work. Hello boils and ghouls, welcome to the Drown Boy Halloween special. I hope everyone's having a spooky evening, and I hope you all are enjoying yourselves so far. I don't want to take up too much of anyone's time, so I'm going to go ahead and get right through this. Recently I decided to re-watch the MTV Scream series, and after watching it, at the end of an episode I noticed Louisiana Entertainment, and I thought to myself, I'm not too far from that place. I wonder if the production company happens to have anything from the show. So I contacted them and asked, and they told me to contact the costume department. And so I did, and they said, you know what? We might just have a couple things, let us check and get back to you. And sure enough, they did. And this was a case of right place, right time, because they were actually cleaning out their storage and throwing stuff away to make room for new productions. And they were actually about to get rid of all the stuff I'm about to show you. So, had I have not messaged them at the perfect, perfect time that I did, None of this would have ended up in my collection, and it probably would have ended up in a landfill somewhere. So as you guys may can tell, there's quite a bit of stuff back here to talk about. But first things first, let's address the elephant in the room, the killer costume. Now this is comprised of several different pieces, so I'm going to break it down step by step. Number one, we have the mask, which is a replica by Ozeron. Number two, we have the poncho. This poncho would be what you would call the hero poncho, I guess. It was used for all of Season 1 and all of Season 2. They said this was the go-to costume they would have used for most shots. However, there were three that were used in production, and they used all three at various different stages. Under this, what we have is a hoodie that was worn by the actors or stuntmen that portrayed the killer to cover any more skin or anything around the neck area. Essentially, you would think they would wear like a balaclava to keep their hair from being shown, but really it was just a hoodie and then the mask on top of that. And the hoodie and the poncho were both worn by Stanton Barrett and Alec Ramey. 
which if you guys don't know, were the two stuntmen to portray the killer in season 1 and 2. They also included the gloves, which were used, I believe, in season 1 and 2 as well. However, they had, I think, like 10 pairs that were used all throughout the seasons because their gloves are going to get a lot of wear. Also, they can easily be lost or misplaced, so you need to have extra copies. And there's no way to screen match these or say for sure what they were used for. I just know that they were used in the production. Then we get down to the t-shirt, which is a long sleeve black t-shirt that was worn by Willa Fitzgerald and Amadeus Serafini. I believe both of them at different points whenever they were dressed as the killer or portrayed as the killer at some point in season two, they both wore the shirt. I'm not quite sure that's just what was told to me, but I know it was also used for the killer outfit, so I have that on all the way under this. So it's all three layers, the gloves, and then we get on down to the pants. The pants I have included are the same brand and same make, however, they are not screen used. And much like the pants, the boots are also not screen used, however, they are the same exact brand, Tactical Performance Jungle Boots, which we found out about because I had some behind the scene pictures that showed the exact pair of boots that they used, however, they couldn't find the actual boots, so thanks to Nick Meese over at Scream Thrilogy, we were able to find the same exact pair of boots and I was able to pick some up. As far as I know, this would be the only one of these probably in existence out of the three that were used. He doesn't know what happened to the other two ponchos, so maybe they're out there, but I've never seen them pop up. I've never seen anybody mention having them. But these were not stock ponchos. These were modified. This isn't something you would go pick up off a shelf, so if you think you have a screen-accurate costume, you could be close because I think I found a brand that's very, very similar to this style poncho. However, I know there were alterations made to this poncho and all the ones that they used, including the hoods. And uh, you can kind of tell somewhat it's not like a normal poncho, at least with the hood. So alterations have been made and it's not stock. Next up, we're going to get into some cast and crew pieces. I've actually never owned any cast and crew pieces, so this is pretty exciting for me. So let's get right into it. Number one, we have a t-shirt from the production company. This is the company in Louisiana. And on the back, there's another logo. And now getting into something a little bit more interesting. Here we have a shirt from season one. Very, very cool. As you can see, Scream TV series season one. And it has the Brandon James or Killer Mask there on the front. On the back it says cast and crew 2015 because this was for the first season. Next up we have something that seems to be a tradition in film, cast and crew jackets and this is my first one and it's a pretty freaking cool one. And here it is, a nice blood red and black rain jacket. There on the front there's some nice embroidery which says Scream the TV series season 1 2015. Other than that though it's pretty much just a stock jacket. Almost forgot to show this one off. Here is a producer's hat. Of course it can be buttoned on the side, but this is exactly how it came to me. And it just says Scream the TV series, pretty basic bucket hat. And uh, yeah, all this stuff is signed on the inside, all personalized for the person that owned it. And next up we have one of the weirdest things I've ever seen, producer's frames. These are just like something you would get in an IMAX, but with the lenses popped out. Uh, not really too much to it, I don't really know if this was worn or what this was used for, but they were called Producers Frames, and it has Scream the TV series printed on the side there. So yeah, Scream Glasses, that's a first for the collection. And these next two cast and crew items are pretty weird. These were like clearly handmade or made in the area. But yeah, here is a messenger bag that has Brandon James or the killer painted on the front. On the back, just some blood stains. Very, very well made, a very thoughtful gift, well painted has a nice clasp on it, and on the inside it says Scream of 2016, so I'm guessing this is when they wrapped Season 2. Oddly enough, this is not the first Scream messenger bag in the collection. There was actually one that was released before, and I have that as well. And this is probably the rarest Scream candle to ever pop up. Uh, it's pretty much just a prayer candle, but it says Costume Department. It was awarded to Jared, and uh, it has some Scream font on there, a picture of the killer, a nice little promo shot. And this was just made and given to the cast and crew. So yeah, something really, really weird. I, I don't know. But yeah, it's a Scream candle. I've never had it, and now I have one. 
But guys, the scores didn't just stop there because right after I purchased these items, I decided to hop on the old eBay and see if there was anything from the TV series, whether it be old promotional items, just any weird stuff available. And much to my surprise, there were actually quite a few lots of different props from the TV series, including like different drawings, um, some tickets, different photographs, tons of different stuff. And I actually ended up winning a few of those lots. Well, I say a few, I ended up winning most of those and I ended up with several different pamphlet bags full of tons of different stuff, all of it different like paperwork throughout the entire TV series that was used. And what's left in here are duplicates of some of these newspaper articles and a few of the different pictures. For the most part, everything that was unique or there was just one of a kind of ended up in frames and I tried to put those all around the display. So first up, I want to show you a few items that I haven't quite got framed or displayed yet because I'm waiting on some shadow boxes. Here we have a bag of evidence of some really, really gory photos of Will Belmont's death. Uh, I think these were handed in to Acosta in one of the episodes. And next up are two pieces that I absolutely did not expect to see in here, and it really blew my mind when I did see them. The first of those being this photo of Emma at three years old with Troy James. This photo was used in season two and it was a pretty interesting prop that really stuck with me. Of course, this is the photo with Troy with his face scratched out. And what's really, really interesting about this particular copy is this is the original prop. There were several, several, several copies of this that were made. Some of them were sold in some of those lots that I didn't win. However, I ended up with probably 10 to 15 uh, photocopies essentially of this image that were used in different scenes throughout the show. But, like I said, I did not expect to find the very, very original copy in there. But yeah, if you look on the back, this is fully aged. It says Emma, age 3. This is really torn, and it has the tape. All the scratches are real. I don't know how well the light will catch that. All the bends and folds are real. All that distressing is real. And all the other copies that you see in the show are pretty much copies of this. And we also have the original Polaroid photo of that as well. This one is the non-damaged version, and it's in a slightly, slightly different, like, filter tone. A couple more interesting props, which I actually already do have framed and in a shadow box back here, are some Lakewood Sheriff patches from their uniforms, which I guess were cut off after production. And then there's one with the uh, Department of Corrections from Season 2, the Halloween special, where Kieran is being taken in. Unfortunately, they weren't the entire outfits, but this actually works out pretty well for me because I've seen quite a few of like the guard or sheriff officers or police officer costumes around, and that stuff is cool. However, it doesn't display as well, and this is obviously much easier to display, so I'm okay with it. Next up, we have tons of photos over here, and unfortunately, this display is somewhat in disarray because every time I put the photos in, because it's not one piece and it's in a giant poster frame, most of the photos slowly slide down. However, I need to get in there and repair that and make it where they're just kind of held in place. I think if I back it with a little bit more cardboard, it should kind of hold them in place a little bit better. These are just various different props that were used throughout season two. I have tried to screen match most of them. Some of the stuff I found screen matches for, some of the stuff not so much. And next up we get into the newspaper clippings, which are honestly one of my favorite parts of this entire display. Some of these clippings are from season one, some are from season two, but all this stuff while being used in the show was never really focused on or shown up close that much, but all of these have different write-ups. The amount of detail that they put into this is ridiculous. Another thing I noticed, there are some newspaper clippings that are like, on the same event, like the circus, where Kieran uh, ended up being brought out as the killer and he has the knife taped in his hand and it's in the fun house. That exact minute, there were a ton of reporters and a ton of paparazzi that came up and started taking pictures. And like that true fashion, all of these different stories are written from different perspectives and some of them feature pictures which were taken at the same exact moment but from different perspectives. So that layer of detail is just amazing, especially for something that isn't even really going to be shown. I'll be sure to try and give you guys a close-up of all the different newspaper clippings, just so you can get a decent look at them, because there's a lot to appreciate here, a lot to take in, and a lot of stuff that you really don't get to see in the show. Also included in the lot are a couple different pieces which were actually handwritten for the show, including this form for Audrey whenever she went to Acosta's office. 
This was for the Crescent Palms room 213. I think this was for Eddie, who ended up taking the liquor bottle up to room 213, where, of course, Kieran, the killer, killed him. Here in the center is a form for Lakewood Flowers. I think that was for the teacher when she was in the hospital after she took that nasty fall. And back over here is one of Noah's interviews for the morgue. So that pretty much does it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, it's quite a crazy haul, quite a crazy amount of stuff. This, to me, is ridiculous. It just feels crazy to me to be standing next to this, the screen-used killer outfit, when after all, what really started this channel, or I guess what really kicked it off, the first video I released on this channel was a video on a Brandon James mask. And here I am, 9,000 subscribers later, talking to you guys about the screen-used Brandon James costume. That feels like something came full circle. I don't know if it's destiny or whatever you want to call it, but the timing of this was impeccable. This was something that would have ended up in a landfill, would have been thrown away, just whatever. But I just so happened to say, hey, do you guys happen to have anything? And now here it is. But what started it all for me was this mask. A mask that I saw and loved for its creepy, human-esque, but humanless emotion. But this mask also made a ton of people hate this show and never give it a chance. Whatsoever. A lot of people saw that and immediately, before the show even had a chance to air, wrote it off. This is going to be terrible. Look at the blowjob mask. It looks like he's giving a blowjob. Oh, it looks like the mouth's open for a blowjob. I'll give it to you guys there. It probably wasn't smart for them to name the character BJ, with the initials BJ, Brandon James, and also have the mask look like that. You got me there. But really, the show itself is good. The acting is good. The character development is good. There are characters that you start off hating that you end up loving. You care about them. You care about what happens to them. And the killer is creepy. It's something of its own. It's not Ghostface. It is a remake. Honestly, I feel the show would have fared better had it have been named Lakewood or something along those lines. It was just the same story, maybe a slightly different looking killer, but same story. It would have been a hit, but because it was named Scream and because of this, people hate it. And most people aren't willing to give it a chance because they're always going to compare Brandon James to Ghostface. And I think that's rather unfortunate. However, if you pay attention to the series and you look at the parallels that they draw, you look at the throwbacks, you look at the Easter eggs, it really is a lot like Scream. It's just not the 90s. It's more of a modern take on it. And I think it really does work. Season 1 and 2 were pretty fantastic. And I hate they left us off with that shitty fucking cliffhanger. And it is a shitty fucking cliffhanger. Because at the beginning of the episode, you get that really awesome scene. And the rest of it is complete horseshit. And I hope that this Halloween special makes up for that shitty Halloween special. Alright guys, well I think that about does it. I'm going to hop off of my soapbox and quit ranting at you. And I'll let you guys get back to enjoying your Halloween or whatever spooky debauchery you guys are getting into tonight. And I wanted to say yet again a huge thank you for 9,000 subscribers. It truly means a lot coming from that. Coming from that original unboxing for that Brandon James mask all the way here. Feels ridiculous. Guys, I truly am humbled to be doing this and to be making artwork and to be enjoying artwork, not just these vintage Halloween pieces, not just these movie props, but everything that I get to do, I love it, and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Thank you all so much for your continued support, and I hope to be making some really awesome content for you in the future. So with that said, I love you guys. Don't forget to check your candy, and have a happy Halloween. Hello, viewer. Why don't you subscribe to Drown Boy, so we might be able to monetize enough to buy some more crap online. Or I'm going to have to do it myself. <laughs>